We all have our favorite TV shows from when we were growing up, but when it comes to us 90s kids, we tend to be a little bit protective of the precious programs that helped us mature into the intelligent young adults that you see today. Remember Bobby's World? It was a good show! <sighs> okay, okay. Shut up. But in case you couldn't tell from the doodled up whiteboard behind me, my favorite 90s cartoon is Rugrats. Yes, Rugrats, the show about babies that inexplicably talk and have notoriously neglectful parents. I loved this show as a kid, and you know what? I still love it today. Or at least, most of it. The series took a bit of a nosedive after a while, and this is very obvious from the amount of characters that they kept trying to shoehorn in around the end of its run. Look at you, Taffy! Your name is stupid. I don't like it. But I'm more quick to blame Nickelodeon executives on pressuring the creators to milk their cash cow until it's a husk of its former self. And boy, oh boy, did they milk it. Featuring the voice of Bruce Willis as Spike. I ate one of Chucky's diapers one time, and let me tell you, that is spicy. Now just in case you weren't a RATTASTIC 90s kid. Rugrats was a show that starred a cast of babies that went on all sorts of adventures through places that us boring adults would find completely normal. But through the magic of... Childlike wonder. Their environment would transform. This prompts them to go exploring, which of course, their parents don't notice at all. Wacky cartoon hijinks ensue, the kids possibly destroy local business, and boom! You got yourself an episode, Rugrats. I will say this though. Rugrats stands the test of time somehow, it remains a quality show. And granted, I'm now a cynical 23-year-old man, but I still love it. And like many other former 90s kids who are disappointed with the ill-fated hand that life has dealt them, I got excited when Teen Nick announced a new late-night block set to feature an assortment of classic 90s cartoons. The block was called The 90s Are All That, which was later rebranded to The Splat, which was rebranded a third time to Nick Splat. I'm not even joking when I say this, but I wrote the script a few months ago as I was finishing my last semester of college. And on March 19th of this year, I completely missed this. I'm glad I checked it before I made the video, but <laughs> they renamed the block for the fourth time now, calling it Nick Rewind. And doesn't that mean the same thing? Like imagine if Adult Swim kept changing the name of their block to mean something that meant exactly the same thing that it meant prior. Like, get out of the pool, kids, or go play outside with your friends, or <laughs> give daddy the remote, Travis. <laughs> you get the point. Rugrats wasn't immediately added to the block, but once the experiment proved to be successful, and let's be real, people were demanding this kind of thing for a long time. Nickelodeon was more than happy to bring more 90s programming back to our screens. It had been years since I had actually sat down to watch some episodes of Rugrats, so it was a very welcome trip down memory lane for me. I expected my return to this show to be rather underwhelming or even kind of cringy just thinking about all of the hours that I spent watching this show constantly as a kid or subjecting my parents to watching it or having it playing in the background at all hours of the day. But in a way, it strangely felt as if I was watching the show for the first time. And why is that? Well, it's because I'm old. Or rather, I'm older. Admittedly, it's kind of sad not being a child anymore. But I'll tell you what's nice. Having learned the skill of logical thinking. Because once you get older, you realize that it makes absolutely no sense for there to be monsters under your bed, or to have a watermelon grow inside your stomach if you swallow the seeds. And I most certainly cannot get sucked down the drain of my bathtub. Now I have more adult anxieties and fears in my life, like earning enough money to pay the bills each month, or not having anyone to talk to at a party. So with my newfound adulthood, there came a new perspective when I was watching the show. I realized that now I actually understand what all of the parents were talking about in each episode. It was no longer just some subplot outside of the main action, no, it, it was as if I was finally watching the intended story of the episode taking place. Look, we were all dumb kids at one point, but it isn't until we're much older that we start to see our parents for the people that they truly are. We deify them from a young age because we rely on them to educate us on the things we haven't yet learned about. But at a certain point, the metaphorical paint chips begin to break off from the perfect image of our parents that we created in our minds. And what's left? Just a 
normal human being. One that has flaws and is imperfect, yet we still love them all the same. I believe that Rugrats conveys this idea very accurately, as all of the kids in the show not only look up to and admire their parents, but also mirror them in very interesting ways. Watching this show now through an adult's lens and having gotten a B-, B minus in community college psychology, I happen to notice a couple things about the parents. Things that make you aware of how realistic and how well written this show actually is. Let's consult the whiteboard. All right, so we got the main pickles house. We got Dee Dee, Stu, Tommy, and Grandpa Lou. And with Grandpa Lou, I do not write anything about him because I forgot. <laughs> No, but he doesn't really have as much of a character compared to Dee Dee and Stu. He does have, like, some episodes that are about him, but there's not much to pick by. He's just an old guy. Uh, not only that, but we also have who I didn't write up here. We got Dill, but if I'm going to be honest, Dill is more of just, like, a sentient potato child than an actual character, so we're not talking about Dill. Anyways, Dee Dee Pickles is not just the mother of Tommy, but in a way, the mother of the entire cast. She always seems to be the go-to person for the adults whenever they need advice, whether that be for their personal life or parenting, which I think is kind of hilarious, because while I haven't kept count, I'm pretty sure both her and her husband have lost the kids more than anyone else in the show. Guess Dr. Lipshit's never had a chapter on keeping track of your kids. What's a dinosaur to do? When there's kids on the ice, quick, somebody call their mom! Her role in the group is the same role that she has with her son. To be a mother, someone that people can confide in, knowing that she has their best interest in mind. And while Tommy isn't necessarily a mother, he is still the leader of the group and supports his friends whenever he can. Stu has much more influence in regards to Tommy, however. As we see him demonstrate nearly every episode, the man is extremely creative and imaginative, very much similar to his own son. He's a big kid at heart, but he also proves time and time again throughout the series that he cares for his family deeply. Being a toy inventor that works all day in the basement seems like it could be mentally taxing on a person, but his will and motivation to provide for his family while still doing a job that fulfills him is incredibly admirable. However, not everyone seems to support him in this pursuit, leading us into the next family. <sighs> the other Pickles family. Pickles house number two. We got Drew, Charlotte, and their little Satan spawn of a child, Angelica. Dear God, I hate this child. But at least now I can understand why she is the way that she is. As demonstrated throughout the entirety of the series, Charlotte is a workaholic, which has a clear effect on her home life. Especially today, I think it's important for children to see both of their parents work, and I'm positive that Charlotte is a firm believer in that philosophy. Knowing that she has a sweet little gremlin at home that she doesn't want to disappoint, likely motivates her to work even harder as well. She definitely loves her family, she just shows it differently. However, this has led to her almost never being present enough when spending time with her daughter, leaving the majority of parenting duties to fall onto her husband, Drew. When she is around, her time is usually spent on the phone, constantly yelling at her assistant, Jonathan. She is Angelica's most vital female role model, so when this is the behavior that she constantly exhibits around her daughter, Angelica makes the assumption that this is how one must act in order to get what you want from others. But how does all of this affect Drew? Well, being constantly emasculated by his wife and manipulated by his daughter at home, he feels his prior sense of importance weakened. So how does Drew try to repair his crippled ego? Therapy? Psh, no. He takes out his frustration on his little brother just like when they were kids. These two constantly get into both verbal and physical fights throughout the series, usually played for comic relief and to show us that even the adults can act like children. Reviving the sibling rivalry is the only way that Drew can now feel superior as his title of big brother can never be stripped away. So it's only natural that Drew seems to always have a bone to pick with his brother. Now we are at House Finster, home to flaming red hair and Screaming in the middle of the night. <laughs> so for this family, I'm going to refrain from talking about the movie where they all go to Paris and have a kaiju battle, causing millions of euros in property damage, because everything that happens in the series from that point on is a dumpster fire. But I'll talk about that movie in another video sometime. So Chucky has a dead mom. You know it, I know it, all of the adults in the show know it, but not Chucky. As far as he's concerned, 
He just doesn't have a mom. The creators of the show never gave a clear answer as to what Chucky's mom, Melinda, died from, other than it was succumbing to a terminal illness, which I think is an important aspect to the show. As unfortunate as it is, there are a lot of children out there who had to grow up and are still growing up with an absent parent, whether it be to divorce or death. So to have a main character being raised by a loving single parent is an excellent touch that I applaud. However, the absence of Melinda is explored much more through Chucky's perspective as opposed to Chaz. Sure, we get snippets here and there, but the central focus is on Chucky wishing that he had a mom like the rest of his friends. Chaz understandably has his issues, which seem to have been inherited by Chucky. I mean, even their nightmares are similar. I'll be I'm not Tommy! <laughs> Go over. As a result of losing his wife so early, Chaz's natural reaction to everything would be to protect Chucky at all costs. And that's by no mean a bad thing. But the result of his constant coddling has resulted in his son being just as scared of the world as he is. But then, when they go to Paris, Chaz meets a lady who works for this one lady that Chaz tries to marry, but then Chucky's like, no! And then Chaz is like, oh, you're a bad lady, so I'm gonna marry your assistant. And then that's what he does. And now Chucky has a mom and a sister. And it's all good now. Yeah. All right, we got two more families to go. We're almost there. Next up is the DeVille family. We got Betty, Howard, Phil, and Lil. Now, here's the thing with the DeVilles. The DeVilles are interesting. And everyone thinks that they know everything about this family. When in reality, do we? So there are a lot of fan theories about this show, but the most popular fan theory is actually pretty straightforward. And to that I say, maybe not? Now I fully realize how slippery of a slope I'm about to go down, but please know before you raise your torches and pitchforks at me that I'm merely providing my interpretation of these characters. If the creators of the show revealed to us today that Howard and Betty are gay, then I completely accept that. But here's my point. If this were, let's say for example, Rocco's Modern Life, which is a show that aired on 90s Nick as well, I'd be more supportive of the theory. After all, Rocco has garnered a bit of a reputation for its subtle adult humor. At least subtle to the kids anyways. I can do that. Could I? Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. But Rugrats is too close to reality and much more wholesome in comparison for me to think that they would try to make such a bold statement about two characters. Rugrats has just never been known to push the envelope much. Except for, of course, that one time Grandpa Lou rented a porn tape. Lonely space vixen. <laughs> uh, that's for after you go to bed. Not only that, but Betty, Howard, and the twins are honestly the most one-dimensional out of all the other characters in the show, and are typically in the mix to serve as comic relief. What is there to even say about these characters? Betty is loud and tough. Howard is quiet and kind of a wimp. Betty has a job while Howard is a stay-at-home dad. If anything, the writers just wrote them to be a couple with reversed stereotypical gender roles, which is progressive in its own right. After all, opposites attract. Phil and Lil are definitely the craziest of the bunch, but I feel like Howard and Betty seem to have it together more than any of the other parents in the show. Except for one family though, the last family on our list. The Carmichaels. We got Randy, Lucy, Alyssa, Edwin, Buster, and Susie, and they're all awesome! This family was not introduced to Rugrats until the 75th episode, which was entitled Meet the Carmichaels. Oh well jeez, I wonder what this episode is about. It served as a way to introduce the character Susie, who acts as a foil to Angelica for the rest of the series. Now, the reason as to why the Carmichaels aren't a complete mess is due to the fact that their purpose in the show when first introduced is to be the perfect family. And sure, every family has their issues, but they definitely have it more together than the rest of the families in Rugrats. They have four children, the oldest of which is 16 years old. So if they face uncharted territory and parenting struggles, it's likely going to be with Susie's oldest sister, Alyssa. They've already been through the manic parent phase that the rest of the adult cast is currently going through. On top of that, Lucy Carmichael is a professional surgeon, pilot, and chef, while her husband Randy is a writer for the Dummy Bears TV show. So if you really think about it, Susie isn't the only foil here, it's the parents as well. The Carmichael family represents everything that the original cast 
cast isn't. I honestly wish that we could have seen more of the Carmichaels throughout the series, but they were more of an occasional cameo family, with the exclusion of Susie, who even then wasn't a constant addition to the main cast of children. But I suppose that perfect families just don't make good enough TV, as opposed to dysfunctional families who have a collective attention span that's worse than the family dog. You, you know what? Spike is actually the best parent out of all of them. That's... That's the whole point I've been leading up to this whole time. Hashtag justice for Spike. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised at how much of a lasting appeal Rugrats has. Sure, it isn't a perfect series by any means, and definitely declined in quality after overstaying its welcome for a few years. But regardless, Rugrats stands out in cartoon history as a wonderful program that I highly recommend going back to watch. There's really something here for everyone in this show, and it serves as a reminder to us that no matter how tedious and frustrating our lives as adults can be, there's still a little magic left out there in the world. Well. Looks like my work here is done. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to go give a motivational TED talk about drills or something. Cynthia, she's a really cool dancer. Cynthia, plug it to the groove now. She's got those moves. Long as you move those arms and legs. She's moving up on the floor. She's ready to break some eggs. Make it online 